Today we've got a problem that was shortlisted for the 1986 International Math Olympiad. And I like to think about these shortlisted problems as kind of like potential problems. Just like the potential vampire slayers from the show Buffy the Vampire Slayer in the last season. So give it a shout out in the comments if you watched that show as well. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Let's notice that the set S, which is the set containing 2, 5, and 13, has the property that if you take two distinct elements from S, which I'll call X and Y, and you form X times Y minus 1, you get a perfect square. So let's just notice that 2 times 5 minus 1 is 10 minus 1, which is 9. That's a perfect square, 3 squared. 2 times 13 minus 1 is 26 minus 1, that's 25, which is 5 squared. And then 5 times 13 minus 1 is 65 minus 1, that's 64, that's 8 squared. Our goal is to show for all natural numbers n that are not in S, if we form S union n, or the singleton n, this set does not satisfy this property. And you can work out a couple of examples on your own, but you'll see that those examples fail miserably. If you get a perfect square maybe when paired with 2, then you will not get a perfect square when paired with 5 and 13, and vice versa. If you get a perfect square when paired with 5, you won't get one when paired with 2 or 13. Which makes me think perhaps this set is unique in that it's the only set of three natural numbers with this property. But I'm not exactly sure how to prove that right now. Maybe if you have an idea, also post that in the comments. Okay, so anyway, let's get to our solution. And we'll do this by way of contradiction. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose that our new set S union N, which we can write as 2, 5, 13 N has this property. So by has this property, I mean if we take two distinct numbers from that set, multiply them, subtract one, we get a perfect square. So we know it's true if we take those two numbers from the set 2, 5, 13 by what we checked before. So all we really need to do is to take 2, 5, and 13 paired with our new number n. Okay, so that gives us a nice set of equations. We have 2 times n minus 1 is a perfect square, so I'll set it equal to a squared. We have 5 times n minus 1 is a perfect square, I'll set it equal to b squared. And finally, 13 times n minus 1 is a perfect square, I'll say that's equal to c squared. And now let's work off this first bit of information, that a squared is equal to 2n minus 1. Well, let's notice that this is odd and it's a perfect square. So since it's odd and a perfect square, it must be congruent to 1 mod 4. So it's a basic fact from elementary number theory that all odd perfect squares are congruent to 1 mod 4. So that means we can write 2n minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo 4. Well, what does it mean to be congruent to 1 mod 4? It means you're of the form 4m plus 1. So we have 2n minus 1 is of the form 4m plus 1. Now we can move some things around and we'll see that 2n is in fact equal to 4m plus 2, which means n is of the form 2m plus 1. So in other words, n is odd. So this rule right here told us that n had to be odd. And notice that's before even using anything with 5 or 13. So if we just started with 2 and tried to find a number that satisfies this, the next number would have to be odd. Okay, so now what we'll do is take this condition and loop it back into these remaining equations. So for this first equation, we'll get b squared equals, so 5 times 2m plus 1 will give us 10m plus 5 minus 1, so that'll be plus 
four. And similarly, we'll have C squared is equal to, let's see, that'll be 26M plus 12 for similar reasons. But now let's notice that the right-hand sides here are most definitely even. So since the right-hand side is even, these squares have to be even, but since B squared and C squared are even, that means that B and C are also even. So that means we can write B as two times X and C as two times Y, where X and Y are natural numbers. So let's be careful because this X and Y are playing different roles than the X and Y over here. So I'm reusing notation from how the problem is written, but I think that's okay. But next up, let's take this evenness of B and C and loop it back into our equations right here for B squared and C squared. So that'll leave us with four 4x squared equals 10m plus 4. And then we'll have 4y squared is equal to 26m plus 12. And then if we look at this for a little bit, we'll notice that 4x squared is a multiple of 4, 4 is a multiple of 4, 10 is not a multiple of 4. That means that m must be even. And then similarly, this equation down here also tells us that m has to be even. So we might be tempted to go and say, well, if m is even, then m is something like 2 times k for a new integer k. But then we're just in this loop of introducing new variables. So I think there's probably a simpler way. So instead of looping this back into this equation here, so this didn't quite work, and it's good to see that it didn't, didn't quite work because not everything works the first time around. What we'll do instead is look at the difference of b squared and c squared. So notice that c squared minus b squared is 13n minus 5n. The minus ones cancel, so we get 8n is equal to, like I said, c squared minus b squared but that'll be four times y squared minus x squared using these expressions for uh, b and c. So let's see, that tells us that y squared minus x squared is equal to two times n. But now let's notice that two times n is of the form 4m plus two, so this is congruent to two modulo four. So we have a difference of squares being congruent to zero mod four, but this is impossible. So I'll put this as a contradiction because y squared is either congruent to zero or one mod four, and x squared is also only congruent to zero or one mod four. So when you take their difference, you can achieve anything mod four except for two. Notice taking the difference here will never end up with something that's two mod four. So in fact, what we have is y squared minus x squared is either congruent to zero, one, or three mod four, but never two mod four, like I pointed out. But that's our contradiction. So what did we contradict? We contradicted the fact that such an n that made this set have this property existed, so no such n must exist. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.